Hey my sweet cupcakes, welcome back to another video. So today I am going to be talking to you guys about keratosis pilaris, what it is, what my dermatologist told me to use, and what I have used in the past based on my experiences. So as you guys know, or if you don't know, I have keratosis pilaris, and if you wanna see what my keratosis pilaris looks like on my arms, I'm gonna to link to a video down below. It is my insecurities video, and in that video I show you guys what it currently looks like. Um, so if you don't know what keratosis pilaris is, they are basically little bumps on the skin um, because your skin produces extra keratin. The keratin then blocks the hair follicles and you get little bumps. Um, let's see what else. It is usually on the arms, thighs, cheeks, and buttocks. They are white, sometimes red, and typically they don't hurt and they don't itch. The condition isn't often serious and medicated creams can help. Um, basically, what my doctor has told me is that it is genetic. It's something that you cannot f completely get rid of. It is always going to be there. It might lessen sometimes and it might, you know, just flare up other times, but you can treat it and, um, yeah, that is what is awesome about that. It is something that either you have a lot or maybe you don't have that much or maybe you just have a little bit and it goes away but it always comes back. Um, so there are different levels to how much KP you can have and also where. I know some people only have it on their arms. I personally have it on my arms and on my legs. Um, on my arms is really where I was very insecure about it. It was just something that really kind of lowered my self-esteem. I just, I hate hated my KP. So that is kind of where I have it. Um, so when I really wanted to take action on the KP and really wanted to start doing something about it and start treating it, I went to my sister's dermatologist and I had gone to other dermatologists uh, before going to my sister's and they had given me a bunch of creams and just different things that didn't work. So when I went to my sister's dermatologist, she took one look at my skin and she knew what I had and without even looking at the rest of my body, she knew where I had it. Um, so that's kind of something cool. Like she brought out a huge book, flipped to the keratosis pilaris section and I read it and I was like, yep, that is what I have. <laughs> um, so then she told me about different creams and different things that I could use. I just wrote it down here. I have a little checklist of what I want to talk to you guys about. I just really want to help you guys um, treat it because I know, like I said, it was something that really was a problem for me and if this video in any way, shape, or form can help one of you, then my mission is accomplished. <laughs> okay, so anyways, I went to my dermatologist and um, she recommended AM Lactin or AM Lactin. I'm not sure how to say it, but um, I'm gonna put a picture of it right here because I don't currently have that with me, but it is a lotion that is really awesome because it is specially um, made for people with keratosis pilaris. So just right there, it's just an awesome lotion. I personally love it a lot. They sell it at any drugstore. I've seen it at Target. They also have it at Costco. The reason why I don't currently have it right now, even though it is super awesome, is because I tend to get tired of products and I like to try different things. And I'm gonna get to that a little bit later. But AM Lactin, I really do recommend. My dermatologist recommended it to me and it helps me so much. So I really recommend that. Then uh, she also just recommended Dove, and I've used Dove all my life, and I have that because, <laughs> I mean, I use it all the time. This is just the regular white Dove bar soap. Um, this is awesome because it has lotion type properties. It leaves your skin very, very smooth, and I have not had any problems with Dove. Um, when I went to my dermatologist, she recommended Dove to clean my makeup out and to clean my face. I know a lot of people say to not use bar soap on your face, but I feel like Dove is an exception for 
for that because it is so gentle. Um, they also have the sensitive version. This is just the regular white, uh, but they also have a sensitive Dove um, bar soap if you do want to try that first. But I use it on my face all the time. I've never had a problem with it. It has never broken me out. It has never clogged my pores. So I trust and love Dove with my whole life, basically. Okay, so that is what my dermatologist told me. Very clear, very simple. So now we're gonna move on to my experiences and what I have learned about my keratosis pilaris and just, I guess, keratosis pilaris in general. Um, I've read a lot of forums, I've read a lot of threads on people talking about it and what other people recommend. And so this is from my experience and what I um, have learned. So. First off, you do not want to pick at it. Keratosis pilaris can seem like acne, even though it's not. Um, I also want to mention that it's not a disease. Disease, to me, just seems like a really harsh word. It's not a disease, it is a skin condition. It is not contagious. You're not gonna get it if you touch it. Like, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about it, so I just wanted to point that out. So yeah, you do not want to pick at it. When I was not treating it and my skin was very dry, um, it used to feel like acne. But when you pick at it, um, the little like layer comes off and you will see a little like hair follicle. And that is basically what it is. It is clogged hair follicles on your skin. Um, it's not gross, nothing oozes out or anything like that, but that's just what it is. But you do not want to pick at it because just like acne, it can leave scarring and it can leave dark spots. So that is one thing that I've learned because I used to pick at it all of the time when I was little. Um, now, because of the products that I've been using, it is nice and smooth and even if I wanted to pick at it, there is nothing to pick at. So that is really awesome. <laughs> so yes, do not pick at it. Next is um, no hot showers. Now that is something for me that was really hard because I noticed that when I did take a hot shower or a hot bath, um, it really just like made it flare up and um, made it a lot worse. It made it really red and it was not good at it at all. Something else that I've learned is that humidity is good for keratosis pilaris, but when it exceeds the like normal amount of humidity and like goes into a really, 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 really like burning hot temperature, that is not good. And I love my showers like burning hot. I don't know why, but I do. So really, really hot showers, I will not recommend, even though sometimes when it's really cold, I do it, uh, but it just really makes my skin really bad. So I do not recommend hot showers. I have also noticed that sunlight does also help. Like I said, a little bit of humidity really helps to hydrate the KP. Um, and I've noticed that sunlight also helps. Now you don't wanna be standing out in the sun all the time, cause you know, the sun, is not good also like it's it's good for the kp sometimes but too much is just not good overall i know that you guys have heard that a lot you always want to make sure that you do wear sunscreen um but i have noticed that in the summer my kp is like so good it is the best that it could be throughout the whole year um where in the winter it's really really dry so then the kp starts getting a little like not very smooth <laughs> but um yeah i've noticed that in the summertime it's really like my skin feels really good and also when i went to florida about a year and a half ago um to disney world um it was so hot and so humid but my kp was loving it my skin was so smooth which um yeah i don't know it kind of feels like i'm contradicting myself with like the heat and humidity is good, but then also you don't want to exceed it into like the hot showers because then it flares up. I hope that is making sense. Um, so the products that I've used, that I've tried on my own, um, just kind of what from what I've read and just from things that I've personally just tried overall is to exfoliate. You want to exfoliate because it takes off the dead skin cells, just like you exfoliate your face, I feel like you should exfoliate your body as well. Um, what I have been loving, and I have to pick this up because I just recently like 
today ran out of it is the caress evenly gorgeous um exfoliating body wash and this is what it looks like and this has uh well this is in the scent burnt brown sugar and karite butter karite butter um so yes I use this and I love this. I like how it smells and I've also read that brown sugar is really good to exfoliate with, especially for keratosis pilaris. I'm sure, pretty sure that other exfoliating uh, body washes will do the same thing, but um, that's personally what I've used and it has helped my skin a lot to exfoliate. I've also come across the Lush Dream Cream. I, again, on the threads and forums that I've read, I saw that a lot of people recommended the Lush Dream Cream, so I decided to get my hands on it and to try it out for myself. And I can say that it has helped my skin. And this is what it looks like. Um, and let's see, it says it's a hand and body lotion and it has oats in it. I know that for sure. So yes, our best selling body lotion for sensitive skin made with an elegant, simple formula of soothing oat milk, lavender and rose water so and it just like smells like oats so this is what it looks like it's super super thick and oats are really really good for the skin as well because they're very nourishing and very soothing so if you do have itchy keratosis pilaris i really recommend something with oats in it um, because it just soothes the skin now the last thing that i have personally tried and that i absolutely absolutely love is coconut oil so you can just get it anywhere this is personally mine this is from trader joe's it's the uh, organic virgin coconut oil but any coconut oil will do um, if you do cook with coconut oil i would obviously recommend that you get a separate one for your body just because you don't want to contaminate it um but i just use this and i just scoop it up with a spoon this is just like a yogurt land spoon but you can use whatever um to scoop it up put it on your hands and just put it on your body and it feels so good it leaves your skin so glowy and really moisturized um you can use a coconut oil on its own which i had done for months like i just used coconut oil as my moisturizer and it made my skin so smooth um and right now i am using it over top of the dream cream so i'll put the dream cream on my arms let that soak in and then put the coconut coconut oil right on top and it just it's like the best combination ever right now um so yeah that is what i have been using i hope that you guys found this video somewhat informative i hope that these products help you guys out and um just know that you're not the only one that has kp i have it thousands of other people millions of other people have it as well so uh yeah so yes i hope you guys like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share this video so that other people can see it and hopefully it will help more and more people along the way please remember that i love you so much and i'll see you in the next video bye